Hey, it's Michelle Berger here to talk to you today about apps. So with the summer rolling around the corner and all the short tops or uh, bodysuit type things, we want to make sure our abs are nice and flat, right? So let's just start talking about the anatomy of your abs. Basically, abs are not just the six-pack washboard abs that you think of. There's all kinds of layers in your core, and there's all kinds of other muscles that run like diagonally through you, like from your back uh, up into your pelvis area. Those are called your psoas muscles. There's also, you know, of course, the lower back muscles that we have to consider when we're talking about abs or your core. So there's a lot of different things, and then there's also what are called transverse abs. And these are the abs that run horizontally, kind of like a belt around your waist, or say a corset. So you see all that waist training. Basically, they start in your mid-back, and then they rotate around and create that nice waist around your midsection. So if you don't work all these different areas of your abs, you're gonna not see the results that you're really interested in. Now, of course, anatomy wise also, we need to talk about fat. <laughs> so we have fat, we have fat uh, that is on top, the top layer of fat that we see, you know, the, the belly bulge, uh, the little you know, pinch and inch type uh, fat that we can grab a hold of. That is, fat that's on top of your muscles. Now there's also fat that's inside. This is called visceral fat. There's fat in your organs, around your organs, all around your intestines. There, uh, It's inside of you and it's not like something you can pinch, but it may be something that is causing uh, a distended belly, uh, belly bloat and things like that. And then of course there is your intestines and there's other, especially with females, there's your reproductive form, uh, reproductive organs in there. So within your belly area, uh, though all those things come into play when we're talking about the aesthetics of your abs. So first of all, let's just talk about the way that I approach working my abs. I work out my abs pretty much every day. I do something every day for my abs uh, within my workout um, in, in uh, also just passively, you know, standing, sucking in my stomach, trying not to just let my posture be all ugh, all over the place. You know, even when I'm sitting, when I'm working out, when I'm standing, uh, constantly being aware of that is a huge, a huge thing. Okay, and then also when I work my abs, I work them in several different ways. I use uh, some uh, letters like C abs. Those are the crunch abs. Those are the ones where we're trying to, you know, like you think about an accordion and smashing those abs together to create hard contraction in each one of those muscles. And they're kind of like little squares. So I think about crunching all those together and creating those muscles being stronger and tighter. Now also there is uh, eccentric abs. Now this is really important as we age because as we age, we tend to like get like smoosh down in their midsection. You can just see it with old people that are kind of like, mm, like this, you know? <laughs> so what happens is that has a lot to do with your, um, the, the lengthening of your, of your ab muscles altogether. They, they, over time, they can kind of get weaker and tighter and uh, more constrained within there. And if we don't work to stretch them out with eccentric motions, uh, resisting the stretch, um, things like that, we'll find that it does, it, we, we can become stocky right in our midsection. So definitely, you know, working your abs eccentrically also really uh, helps work your lower back, keeps good flexibility in there. Um, and then definitely uh, we also work our transverse abs that I was talking about before. Uh, so that is where you can work those uh, all the time. Uh, passively by just sucking in your in your stomach. Uh, the waist trainers have become so popular. That's why they work even in the slightest amount is because they cause you to think about uh, using those transverse abs. Now, the other way, some other ways that you can uh, work those is with like uh, planks, uh, also with vacuums where you're very actively sucking in your stomach. Um, anything that works in core stabilization, anything we have to use those, those small movements. A lot of Pilates exercises use uh, your transverse abs because you're really thinking about keeping that core engaged at, even when you're doing an arm exercise or whatever. So definitely work your abs in many different angles. So that's why not doing just one ab exercise 
is uh, is very productive. If you're only doing crunches, if you're really just only doing crunches, uh, really, really crunching all the time, sure, you might get a washboard ab, but you're not going to have the aesthetic length that you're looking for. You're not going to have the uh, tight little waist that you're looking to tame. So making sure that you're aware of these different items is important. Now, on the other side of it, um, engaging your engaging your core while you're lifting, uh, while you're doing anything is very important. It's very important for the health of your spine and uh, for your posture. So as you're working out, it's very important that no matter what you're doing, you're really thinking about engaging your core uh, and having good posture, making sure you're keeping your lumbar curve in a, in a neutral position. Uh, same thing with your abs. Sometimes you need to really engage your abs in, a different, in certain exercises in order to do it and making sure that you're using good posture and that you're not um, kind of doing... Um, you know, sloppy things uh, as you're working out. Also, when you're doing cardio, make sure you're doing having good posture. I don't know how many times I see people just leaning over the machine, uh, or or they're running and they're like all like running like this. I'm like, how do you even run like that? You need to stand up nice and tall. You know, you think about how the sprinters in the Olympics look when they're running. <laughs> they're not slouching around just plodding along. They are you know, upright, using good form, they're really engaging their core. So think about that as you're going along. And then also we want to talk about diet. Uh, you know, definitely diet plays a huge role in, in getting rid of that body fat that you have on top and inside. And then as far as digestion is concerned, if your gut is not working properly, you're going to have all kinds of inflammation in there. And you're also not going to be absorbing your nutrients properly. So you're going to see, you know, bloating. You're going to see all kinds of, you know, like constipation or the opposite. You're going to have all kinds of issues that will be irritating your gut. Now, some of the biggest things that people are sensitive to are gluten and dairy. And also, many people are sensitive to even things that you think are good, like cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, spinach, and things like that. Some people really react to those, and they cause a lot of bloating. So just, you know, kind of be aware that there's a lot of very, very deep, deep, deep things that you can learn about your gut and healing your gut and helping you uh, flatten that tummy. All right, so, you know, there's all kinds of things that we can do to accelerate the results of our abs, but the number one thing that I want you to get after is making sure that you're thinking about it, having good posture 24-7, and that you're also working your abs. You know, even if there's the fat there, even if there's, even if there's, uh, you know, you're not seeing the abs results, working that core is vital to your, to your overall health. Because if you hurt your back, if you hurt your core, you're just not going to be able to be active and then that will be a detriment to your entire lifestyle. So get after working your core. Uh,